Hi everyone, it seems that almost everybody has had success with the new PTFE Enhanced Wax, which is great news. Now, a few people have had problems and the number one reoccurring problem seems to be I went for a bike ride with the wax and after one ride the chain squeaked and there was bits of wax coming off on my frame. So, what that is, is an incomplete initial clean. You need to get the chain really, really clean, otherwise the wax won't stick to a slightly oily surface. So, get all the chain clean. Inside the chain is the most important part, of course. So, how to fix it? Start again, do the complete clean, and remember, methylate spirits at the end, of course, even two or even three times. Make sure it's absolutely sterile clean. Then bang it in your hot wax and you'll have success. It'll stick and you'll be all right. Now, the second problem is more of a request. What if you're going away for a long trip, say two or three days of riding, maybe even longer, and you're doing well over 250 kilometers riding and you can't take this slow cooker with you to do your chain? What do you do? You need some way to lubricate your chain with the wax. Or you turn up for a bunch ride with the guys, go for a turtle warm up down the street, and you realize, oh, chain's dry and squeaky. I didn't wax it. <laughs> so what do you do? Well, you need a quick and easy application. A bottled wax would be absolutely perfect, wouldn't it? <laughs> well, here it is, the bottled version of the PTFE Enhanced Wax. I'm going to show you how to make it. Now, the things you need, of course, your wax. Here it is in the pot, room temperature, and it's hard, but that's okay. Next thing you need is some sort of a scraper to get some out. So, a flathead screwdriver, nail file, anything you can just get some scrapings of that wax. Next is some fine wire, not coat hanger wire, it's a little bit too thick, so some thin flexi wire will do about six inches. Next is your applicator bottle that you're going to put your liquid wax in, something like that with a fine nozzle. In the nozzle should be about a three or four millimeter hole, thereabouts. Uh, other bottles I find which you can use, this one used to be Dijonese, Dijonese mustard bottle, that's good because it's got a pointy applicator nozzle as well. This one similar, this one used to be maple syrup or maple flavoured syrup, same sort of thing. Make sure your bottle, when your lid's closed, it's airtight. When you open it, of course it works. One that I find is not, it, it, it's okay, but it tends to be awkward because your frame gets in the way or your really spokes and all that, is this one. It's got a big bottle and a small nozzle. It's not really pointy. It'll do the trick if you haven't got anything else, but preferably something with a pointy nozzle like that. Next, you'll need isopropyl alcohol. So get some of that. Then a kettle, electric kettle preferably, easy to do with a wide mouth. You can open it up or it's got a lid that you can take off because you need to put the bottle in there and warm it up. And of course, the last thing you need is a thermometer to keep an eye on the temperature that you're doing inside the kettle. Firstly, cut yourself about five or six inches of wire, a piece like that. Then put the lid on your applicator bottle and then wind the end around just once around the bottle and join it up. Take off the lid, the wire and the nozzle. Then with your scraper tool, scrape some of the wax and you put it inside the bottle. Now about that much in the bottle, what's that, an eighth or a ninth of the bottle? It doesn't have to be precise, because it'll work out anyhow. So about that much. Now get your isopropyl alcohol and put it in. About that much will do. Leave about a tenth of air space in there. Put your nozzle on. Put your wire on. Put your cap on. Now back off the cap a bit. Don't screw it all the way on because it'll be airtight. Back it off a bit so the air can escape. Fill your kettles about halfway. Sounds strange. Fill your kettles halfway. That's all you need. Put your bottle in. Don't put it all the way in. Just let it sort of sit about halfway will do. And bend the wire over the kettle edge like that. Now you need to melt your wax into the isopropyl alcohol. 
The wax will melt at about 53 degrees Celsius, but the boiling point of the isopropyl alcohol is about 82.5. So we need a nice safe medium in between there. And I reckon about 70 degrees. That's what I've used for quite a few times now. So we need to go to 70 degrees with the hot water. At the moment it's 26 degrees. So I put the kettle on and watch the temperature rise to around about 65 because when you turn off at 65 it'll keep rising a little bit to around about 70 to stabilize there. You'll see bubbles inside the bottle, but it shouldn't be boiling. Give it time, about 10 minutes or so, until the wax is completely dissolved and the liquid is all clear. All done, all melted. Now that took about 10 to 12 minutes to melt that. So the bigger the bottle, the longer it'll take. So now just take off the lid, take off the wire, we'll put the lid back on again. Now don't do it all the way up because as this cools it down, it'll form a vacuum in there that's more bit of air and it might put your bottle out of shape. So just leave it loose until it cools down to room temperature. 10 minutes gone past and it's all foggy, that's good. And if there's any floating bits of wax in there that are quite large, they're gonna block your nozzle. So you don't want that when you lubricate your chain. So it means you haven't heated it all the way, you haven't melted all the wax, so you need to reheat it again. Once it's, re once it's heated, Take it out, it should be all clear to start with, so every bit of wax is melted into the isopropyl alcohol. That way you won't get any bits. As it cools down, you can just give it a shake every now and just to make sure. So it should be all like that, all foggy and white. Room temperature now, all done, ready to use. Now, over time, so overnight or a couple of days time, you notice the wax will settle down the bottom, the isopropyl alcohol will be clear up the top, it'll separate a bit. No hassle, all you do is just give it a shake, so it's milky, then you can apply it to your chain. Now remember, this is a temporary lubrication until you can get your chain home and do the job properly with the hot clean, with the hot water, and then of course the hot wax bath. So, you need to clean the chain first. Now, if you've got access to hot water, maybe even a sieve, even better, then do take your chain off and do the hot water treatment before you put it on. If you can't be bothered doing that or haven't got access to that, at least some sort of a rag, give a bit of a clean the best you can on the outside because any dirt that is on the outside, when you put your lubricant on, it's possible that it's going to be dragging some of that debris inside your chain links, which you don't want. So clean your chain best you can, and then put your liquid wax lubricant on. So here's your bike, chain needs waxing, and here's your bottled wax. And shake. You can either pedal this way, or you can pedal that way. I like pedaling backwards because that way the lubricant goes around way from you. That's beautiful, it's silky smooth. So obviously it's got it into the links. And you can smell the isopropyl alcohol. So if you keep pedaling till the smell is almost gone, that'll be ideal. That means it's got in to the links as much as possible. And don't be afraid to put too much on. Better too much than too little. You can always dust the excess off later. The main thing is to get it in between the links. So that's why I use a fair bit of it. Now here I've used probably one-tenth. That's about all you really need, one-tenth. So you get eight, eight, or, eight or nine uses out of this one bottle. Now also put the chain on the big chain ring and put more wax than what is necessary on there. So you can see it's on the chain ring here. And it's built on the wheel. It's on the frame a bit here, on the cogs, and I've even got some quite a bit on the ground that's spilt. So all you need to do, it's like talcum powder. It's not wet, it's dry. So you just need a dry brush and it will brush off or you can just use a rag and sort of dust it off or you can just leave it on, it's up to you.
Well, there you go. Now you have a liquid version of your PTFE wax. Now, don't go using just any other lubricant on your chain in emergency because you don't know what's in these lubricants. Usually they're oil based. Yes, even the wax lubricants out there on the market. So that's going to interfere with the adhesion of your present wax on your chain. So firstly, any oil on your chain is going to attract dirt and it's going to be dragged into the workings of your chain. Second reason, when you go and re-wax your chain in the hot bath, you've got that chain with oil on it, you put it in there and the oil is going to leach out into your wax and contaminate it. And it's going to ruin it, you're going to have to start all over again and make a new batch. And that leads to the third reason, you're going to have to do the complete clean of your chain again. Yes, that means petrol, degreaser and methylated spirits. You've got to get that temporary lubricant that you used out of the chain before you put it into your hot wax bath. Remember, any oil on your chain is going to interfere with the wax adhering to your chain. So, make yourself a bottle or two of the liquid PTFE wax. Take it with you when you go for rides, just in case of emergency for you or your mates. And that way you've done it properly. And all you need to do when you come back home is do the hot water rinse with your chain and whack it straight into your hot wax bath and you're done. Right, that's it. Happy riding and we'll see you soon. Yeah, out the back. Where I thought you'd be coming past. Thanks, mate. Oh, you went pretty close to <laughs> Yeah, I was on the white lines. You were right out. I was on the corner. I didn't need to come that way. Anyway, all good. Wollonga Hill just coming down Wollonga Hill. Nice and fast everyone's got their adrenaline up. <laughs>